Lord, I want to take this time just to say thank you For another good to me blessing I really don't deserve But because of your grace I have another blessing on display Lord, I thank you for a good to me blessing That's kept me daily And because of your grace From sin I'm free Lord I know you bless me Every day But your blessings Come in different ways Lord I thank you For another good blessing
Blessings and favor to all of you God's children. I bless God for you all tuning in with us today for our midweek Bible study. I am your pastor, Nakia McKay, and I'm so grateful to God that you are here with us on today. Amen. That you've taken out time to be here uh, and to fellowship with us on today. Uh, will you do me a favor? Will you please uh, share this page? Uh, invite your family and friends to come on and be a part of us. Uh, as we get ready for a Bible study on today. Amen. And again, I'm so grateful, so glad that you are here with us today. I pray God's blessings and favor have just been overtaking your life. Uh, amen. So far this week. So uh, again, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for sharing me, helping me uh, share this gospel by you sharing this page. Amen. So God bless your hearts today. Listen, let's go ahead and get our Bibles, get whatever we have the Word of God on. I'm not going to be long today. Uh, And let's go to a very familiar passage of Scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verses 1 through 3. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. Do I have any blessed people on here today? If I do, let me see you type down in that box. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am blessed. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 in the Bible reads, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to us today about being a good soldier. Being a good soldier. Whenever I read this passage of scripture, it makes me think about this song we used to sing when I was little. The song says, We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight. I know we have to fight. We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. Did y'all remember that song? We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight. I know we have to fight. We're soldiers, people of God, in the army of the Lord. And we have to fight until we die. We have to fight until we die. Paul was sharing some spiritual wisdom and advice to Timothy in this text about what he needs to do as he begins his, as he begins this this journey, or or rather as he begins uh, his fight in this spiritual battle. Paul was trying to give him some insight. He said, he said, thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In other words, he said, he said, you're going to, you're going to have some hard times to deal with. You're going to have some some, some battles that you're going to have to fight, but you need to be strong and you're going to have to endure hardness as a good soldier. That's something that we need to understand and realize too, people of God, uh, as children of God in this battle, in this fight that we're in. We're going to have some hard times to deal with. There's some things uh, that, uh, that, that we're going to have to face as we go uh, through life. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. We can't get around it. Listen, uh, uh, Job said in, in, in Job 14 and 1, he said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Anybody born in this world is going to have to go through something. We're going to have battles. We're going to have things that we're going to have to deal with. And especially those of us who proclaim to be children of God, believers in Christ, Followers after Christ. We're going to have a spiritual battle that we're going to have to fight. We're going to have trials and tribulations. We're going to have uh, troubles. We're going to have persecutions. We're going to have uh, 
some of us are even going to be crucified. Maybe not physically crucified, but spiritually crucified. People are going to, you know, talk about us. They're going to, you know, say all kinds of things about us. Jesus said in John 16 and 33, he said, These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. That, that word tribulation, tribulation means, you know, a cause of great struggle. A cause of great struggle or suffering. We're going to have these things to go through. We're going to deal with tribulations in this world. But we need to be able to endure these things as we go through. And we need to endure them as good soldiers. We need to be able to endure as good soldiers. Paul told Timothy, he said, listen. As you get ready to go, as you begin this journey that you're on, you need to endure hardness. You need to endure some, you're going to have to endure some things and you're going to have to do it as a good soldier. Now, there are three things that Paul said, shares with Timothy in this text that I believe uh, was, was given as directions or instructions or advice on how to be a good soldier for Christ. Three things that he says here. The first thing he says is, he said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong. And that's the first thing, people of God, that we have to do to be a good soldier in this battle. We have to be strong. We have to be strong. And listen, it has nothing to do with you being physically strong. But it's all about you being spiritually strong. To be a good soldier and fight in this battle, you have to be spiritually strong. Because you can't make it in this world if, you, if, if you're weak, if you're spiritually weak. My dad used to say, my spiritual father, late great prophet Robert C. Blake Sr., he used to say, if you're weak, you're beat. If you are weak, you're beat because you can't make it in this world if you're spiritually weak. You have to be spiritually strong to sustain, to endure the hardness that we, that we face and we deal with on a daily basis. Man, listen, if, if your spirit is not strong, if some of you, if your spirit, you know, was not strong, man, you would have been through you know, thrown in the tile. But your spirit is able to keep you. Uh, um, let me see, one, one writer says, what is it? In so Solomon says in Proverbs 18 and 14, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? See, your spirit is what sustains you and helps you to endure. It's, it's your spirit. But if your spirit is weak, you beat. If your spirit is weak, you, you, you can't make it. See, your spirit can keep you, man, keep you going. I, I, you know, I don't care how, how physically weak you may be, but if your spirit is strong, you will still find the strength and the courage to keep moving, to keep going on. You'll still find the strength to keep believing and trusting God. But if your spirit is weak, you beat. You can't make it. You can't survive. So we have to make sure that our spirit, our spirit stays strong. We have to stay strong in our spirit. Because Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, you have to be strong in your spirit because this thing that we're battling, y'all, is spiritual. This thing that we're battling is spiritual. Even though you may be able to see some things, you know, physically, but, but, but it's all spiritual. 
The sickness that you're dealing with is spiritual. That's why the Bible says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any among you sick? Let him call the elders and let them pray over you. Because this thing is spiritual. It's all spiritual. The political craziness that's going on in this world, it's spiritual. The problems on the job, it's spiritual. The problems in your marriage, it's spiritual. The problems in your family, it's spiritual. And we have to be spiritually strong in order to sustain and make it and, and endure hardness as a good soldier. We have to be spirit, uh, spiritually strong. Zechariah 4 and 6 says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. It's by the spirit, y'all, that we're able to, to survive. I think the problem in a lot of our situations is that we've been trying to fight this thing uh, in the natural instead of fighting in the supernatural. Some of us have been trying to fight with our fists instead of fighting with our faith. But this thing is spiritual. And Paul was sharing with Timothy in his text. He was like, look, man, you're going to have to be strong, but you got to be spiritually strong. To endure the hardness that you're going to face as a good soldier for Christ. And that's how we are, people of God. That's what we have to do. We have to be spiritually strong in order to endure the hardness that we deal with to be a good soldier for Christ. We have to be strong in the spirit. And how do we make ourselves strong in the spirit? You have to build yourself up by praying in the spirit. Jude 1 and 20 says, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You, you want to build yourself up, build up your spiritual endurance? Pray in the power of the Holy Ghost. You got to pray, people of God. You have to pray. You have to pray. You have to pray. You have to build yourself up. You know how some of us go to the gym or some of us exercise to get stronger. We keep exercising. You know, uh, doing repetitions, uh, doing what we do, running, walking, lifting weights, whatever. We keep doing it, exercising. That's the same thing with your, with your spirit. You have to exercise. You have to build your spirit up. And you do that by praying in the Holy Ghost, by praying in the power of the Holy Ghost. Pray, 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 pray. To be strong in your spirit, you have to pray. Second thing Paul says in his text is he said you have to be strong. He said you have to be strong. Listen, to endure hardship as a good soldier. He said you have to be strong. And then he said, but be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, that is so powerful. That is so powerful. Because he said you have to be strong in your spirit, but then you also have to know that that is it's in God's grace. It's in the grace. That, that you're able to endure. You can endure because you're in God's grace. Why was that so important? Because Paul knew that the things that he went through, the things that he battled, he knew that God's grace was sufficient for him. The test and the trial that he went through, he knew that God's grace was sufficient for him. Second Timothy, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 8 through 9. The Bible reads, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities and in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul said, I asked God to remove this thing from me three times. And God showed me, hear this, that his grace was sufficient enough to keep me. Paul was sharing with Timothy that, listen, God's grace is is. It's all that you really need. 
God's grace is sufficient for you. People of God, you need to remember and know this, that as you're enduring hardness, as you're going through the trials and the tribulations, the things that you're dealing with, know that God's grace is sufficient for you. Know that God's grace is sufficient for you. His grace can keep you like nothing else can. His grace can comfort you like nothing else can. For those of you who are going through, God said, be strong in the grace that's covering you because it's sufficient for you. It's sufficient for you. It's all you need. Thou therefore, my son, my daughter, the children of God, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Y'all be strong. We're able to, 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 to stand in this grace. Because of Jesus Christ. And God's grace is sufficient enough to bring us through, to help us deal, to to bring us out, to keep us, that we can endure as good soldiers. That we can endure as good soldiers. And this is what we have to do, people of God. As, As soldiers for the Lord, to be good soldiers. For the kingdom, we have to endure some hardness. We got to go through some things. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. But we need to also know that God's grace is sufficient enough for us. God's grace can keep us. God's grace. It, listen, it, it's it, it's so powerful that, that Paul said, you know, God said that my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So even when you're weak, man, that's when God's greatest strength shows up. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. So know that you're in God's grace and his grace. His grace is what we need. To endure hardness as a good soldier. And then the third thing that God showed me is this. Paul told Timothy. He says, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. Get this. The third thing that God revealed to me. That's what Paul was sharing with Timothy was that in order to be a good soldier, you're going to have to endure hardness. In order to be a good soldier, you're going to have to endure hardness. Why? He said, because it's through the hardness that you endure. It's through the hardness that you go through, you'll be able to teach others that they can endure it also. You'll be able to show others that just like God brought you through, he can bring them through also. Just like God did it for them, he can, just like God did it for you, he can do it for them too. To be a good soldier, we're going to have to endure hardness so that we can do just what Paul says in this text, that we can teach those. We we can teach those who come after us that, listen, I struggle with this addiction and God delivered me from it and he can deliver you too. I, I, I had this affliction. I went through this affliction. God brought me out of it. And guess what? He can do the same thing for you. I went through this situation in my marriage. We we went through this uh, struggle uh, uh, in, in our marriage, in our relationship. And God restored us and God did this in my marriage. And he can do the same thing for you. My child was doing this. My child was was not saved or was not, you know, acting right or wasn't doing the right things. But. But but God delivered them. God saved them. And God can do the same thing for your child. To be a good soldier, 
you have to endure hardness because it's through your testimony. It's through your tests that they become testimonies to help deliver and save somebody else. I've said this before many times, people of God, that your life may be the only Bible that somebody reads. You may be, you may be the connection that somebody needs to meet Jesus and to know who God is. You may be the reason that somebody else decides to change their life around. And this is why we have to always be ready in season and out of season to share a word of hope. To tell them about the goodness, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we have to endure that hardness. We can't give up. We can't quit. We can't throw in the towel. Because what if somebody is watching us? We proclaim to be children of God. We proclaim to be followers of Christ. But if, if hard times happen and we throw in the towel, we quit. We could have just ran somebody else away from, from Christ. We, we could have just destroyed somebody else's somebody else's uh, uh, opportunity to come and know how good God is because we didn't endure hardness as a good soldier. He said endure hardness as a good soldier. To be a good soldier, we have to be strong, but we have to be strong in our spirit. Got nothing to do with you being physically strong. It's all about you being strong in your spirit. Know that you're in God's grace and that God's grace is, is sufficient for you. God's grace is all you really need. But then endure hardness. Endure that hardness. Because it's through you enduring hardness that others will see that if God did it for you, he can do it for me. If God brought you out, he can bring me out. If God delivered you, he's able to deliver me too. He's able to deliver me too. So I ended with this, people of God. Know that we are soldiers in the army. We have to fight. I know we have to fight. We have to hold up this blood-stained banner. And we have to hold it up until we die. Until we die. So endure the hardness as a good soldier. For Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, you may be there, my brother, my sister. Maybe you don't know Jesus as Lord of your life. You've never accepted him into your heart. I want you to know that he wants to be Lord of your life. He wants to come in and be Lord, but he will not force his way in. You have to invite him into your heart today. You have to invite him into your heart. Maybe you're there and you say, I know Jesus, but I've I've backslidden, I've fallen out of fellowship. I want you to know that God is married to the backslider. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's here waiting for you to return. Maybe you're part of a church, you're part of a ministry, and you don't feel like that ministry or that church is changing your life. I say to you that if the church is not changing your life for the better, then you better change your church. You better change your church. Fourth, maybe if you're there and you say, I just want to make sure my soul is saved right now. I don't want to wait another second. Pray this prayer with me, whatever state or condition that you're in. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you now, just as I am. I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. I ask you to wash me with the blood of Jesus. I confess him now as Lord of my life. I believe in my heart that he is your son, that you raised him from the dead, and he is now sitting on your right-hand side, interceding for me. 
Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Lead me and guide me. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to know that you're saved. And what you need to do now is you need to find yourself a Bible-based ministry, a place where the Word of God is being taught, believed, practiced, and working wonders in the lives of God's people. And I believe that New Home Ministries is such a place. So if you would like to be a part of New Home Ministries here in Hammond, Louisiana, uh, why don't you meet us? at 1300 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive uh, in Hammond, Louisiana. Meet us this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Uh, amen. Or maybe you say, hey, I, I feel God leading me to be a part of the ministry, but I'm nowhere near a uh, Hammond. Well, we have cyber members all over the globe, and we would love for you to be a part of our cyber ministry. So you email us your contact information to the email address that's on the screen, and one of our elders or ministers will reach out to you and pray with you, and formally welcome you into the body of Christ. Amen? But for right now, those of you who have accepted Jesus into your heart, uh, those of you that God is leading you to be a part of New Home Ministries, let me be the first one to say, welcome to the family. God bless you. Listen, we pray God's blessings and favor just overtake your life, and that your life from this moment going forward will never be the same, but it will be better in the Lord. Uh, know that this is one of the best decisions that you could have made becoming a part of the body of Christ. So welcome to the family. Know that we love you with the love of Christ and we will be praying with you and for you. Uh, and we thank God uh, for your life. Amen. Again, welcome to the family and be blessed today. Amen. So now, Let's prepare to bless God today with our ministry of giving. Amen. This is our time where we're able to sow back into the kingdom of God through our ministry of giving. For those of you that are willing and able uh, and trusting, amen, and trust and believe God and take him at his word uh, that he would do everything that he said that he would do as it relates to your finances and you giving. Now is the time for you to do that. Again, this is only for those that are willing, able, and trusting, amen, and believe God to bless God. There's some of you who would like to honor God with your tithes. Some of you would like to bless God with an offering. Some of you may need to sow a seed. Amen. For God to meet a need in your life. Well, now is the time for you to do that. Now is the opportunity where we can do that. Amen. Uh, God said if you give, that he'll give back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. Amen. So those of you that are willing and able and trusting God, uh, now is the time for you to be a blessing and sow back into the kingdom of God. Amen. If you look across the screen, there are multiple ways where you can do that. Choose one of those tools. You can go to Giblify, New Home Family Worships in Hammond. You can go to Cash App, dollar sign NH Hammond number one, or you can go to the church website, newhomeministries.org slash give, uh, or you can mail it to the physical address that's on the screen, and one of our recorders will take care of that for you. But whatever you do, do not miss this opportunity to sow back into the kingdom of God. God said, if you take care of his house, he will take care of yours. Amen. And I'm a living witness that God will take care of your house. Amen. If you trust and believe God that he would do everything that his word says that he would do, he'll show you how good he is. Amen. So let's pray as we prepare to give today. Father, we thank you for blessing us with this opportunity and this time to sow back into this kingdom, into your kingdom. Thank you, God, for all that you have made a steward over and have entrusted in our hands. Now, Father, as we give, we give back believing and trusting you that you would do everything that your word says that you would do. And Father, I thank you for receiving this from liberal, cheerful, and, and, and happy spirits and hearts, God. Not begrudgingly or not out of force or manipulation. God, but because we love you, we're sowing, we're giving. Father, I ask that you bless those that had the desire to give, but they could not give today. I ask that you bless them, Father, that the next time they'll be able to give and give double. Father, I thank you that there will be no lack, but increase and overflow hitting the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, God, we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless your hearts and thank you so much for sowing into what we know is good ground here in New Home Ministries. And I pray God's blessings and favor upon your life. Amen. 
Hello family, I pray today's message will make a huge impact on your life on today. But now it's time to sow a seed into Pastor McKay's life. You can use one of the given means listed on the page. I know when you sow into his life, you are sowing into good ground and your life will be blessed. Listen, I want to thank you for being here today. I pray you all were blessed by the word, but I'm always blessed by you being here. I want to invite you to join us this upcoming Sunday for our Sunday morning worship experience right here on New Home TV at 11.30 a.m. But also those of you who would like to join us for our in-person Sunday morning our worship experience. We're in person every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., 1300 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Why don't you come on out and be a part of us? Uh, invite your family and friends. Tell them to come on uh, and fellowship with us if they're anywhere looking for a place to fellowship and they're close by. Uh, tell them to come up, stop on by and, and, and visit us. We would love for them to come and fellowship with us. But you can also uh, be blessed uh, by going to any one of our uh, services uh, in person in any of the locations, Baton Rouge, uh, New Orleans East, New Orleans Uptown, uh, Houston, Texas, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, and in hand. So uh, if you're in the area, there's a new home that's, that's somewhere nearby. I promise if you go, you will be blessed. Amen. So take that opportunity to go and fellowship with us. Amen. Listen, follow me on the social media platforms that's listed on the screen below. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so. Tell your family friends to do so as well. Uh, also, Keep it locked right here. Coming up next at 7 o'clock is my big brother, Bishop Samuel Blakes. Uh, you don't want to miss it. A powerful, powerful message. I know it will be a blessing in your life. So keep it locked right here for Bishop Sam Blakes at 7 o'clock. Amen. Again, God bless your hearts. Thank you for being here today. Please know that I love you with the love of Christ. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Not even if you try. So don't even waste your time. Because I love you, I love you, I love you, and I love you with the love of Christ. Remember this, people of God, where there is much prayer, there's much power. Where there is little prayer, there's little power. Where there is no prayer, there is nothing. So stay prayerful, people of God. Go with God and let God go with you. Until next time, may God bless, keep, and favor your life. Go be blessed and be a good soldier.